Texture maps are a great tool for adding realism to appearances. They can be either produced mathematically or actual photographic images and can be added to any appearance to add the desired detail. There are up to four types of texture maps available to add to appearances depending on the type of appearance selected. Color maps apply a texture across the entire part and are usually a JPEG image. Bump maps create the illusion of raised and lowered details across the part without adding geometry. Specular maps are a grayscale image where the white areas of the map affect the reflection, while the black areas receive no reflection. Gradients between the white and black can be used in a specular map to add further detail. Alpha maps are also grayscale images, but here the white reveals geometry while the black hides geometry. Gradients are also supported in this texture map type. In this lesson, I'll be adding a bump map to the brake rotor of the front left wheel to give the rotor a worn down look. I'll go over how to add and position the map, as well as how to increase its impact. I'll end the lesson by adding an appearance with a pre-added texture and mentioning how to display textures. The rotor on this wheel looks like a brand new, never used rotor. In this lesson, I'll use a bump texture map to give the rotor a well-used appearance. The bump map will add the illusion of raised and lowered sections, perfectly representing the normal wear and tear of a rotor. To add the map, I'll make sure the Appearance Selection tool is active, click on the rotor, and switch to the Appearance tab in the palette. Notice that the color texture map is not available. The appearance type determines which maps can be used, and since this has a metal appearance type, only three of the maps can be used. I'll add the bump map by double-clicking on the bump channel to bring up the browser. Any texture maps with the blue, purple, and pink are bump maps and are often labeled as normal maps. I'll find the used break bump map and click open to add the texture to the appearance. The texture isn't mapped well to the part size, so the texture isn't immediately noticeable. To show it, I'll need to change the texture mapping mode. I'll click the drop down to show the options available. UV mode takes the mapping from the CAD file and can't be manipulated from inside Visualize. So if the map doesn't show in this mode, it should be switched to the mode most closely resembling the shape of the part. If the part shape isn't close to one of these modes, box mode will give the best results. For this example, I'm applying the texture to the flat side of the rotor, so I'll select planar. To move the texture, I'll select the Manipulate Texture option to view the plane that's being used to apply the texture. I can use the middle manipulator to move the entire texture or the white cubes at the edges to scale the texture. Since the mode determines the manipulation options, if I switch the mode to Box, the flat plane is replaced with a box. As you can see, choosing a mode close to the part shape will make lining up the texture easier, so I'll switch back to the planar mode. Next, I'll use the manipulator to move the entire texture to the side. For smaller textures that have heavy repetition, this can be useful, but for this texture, I want it centered on the part. Instead of trying to line it up exactly by hand, I can use the Fit to Part option, and the center of the texture will snap to the center of the part. To increase the illusion of the bump map, I can increase the bump strength, which makes the difference between the highlights and shadows sharper. I can also increase the number of pattern repetitions by increasing the tile and shift the texture by adjusting the shift. I'll reset the tile to 1 and the shift to 0, 0. Disable the object manipulation tool and switch to fast mode to show the full effect of the texture map. Adding texture maps by hand to customize an appearance isn't difficult, and the basic process is the same for any type of texture map. It isn't always necessary, however, as Visualize comes with many appearances that are already loaded with textures accessible from the library. I'll switch to the Library tab and toggle to the Visualize Cloud Library. 
I can drag textures directly into the viewport to add them to the project like anything else from the library. To show the appearances, I'll switch to the Appearances library and add brushed aluminum to the rim. I'll change the roughness to 20 and the bump strength to 0 0.5. Since the rim is closest to a cylinder in shape, I'll switch from UV to cylindrical mode. And now I can see the brushed bump map. Many of the appearances in the Visualize Cloud Library make use of texture maps, so using those appearances will give you access to professional grade texture maps and appearances. Between the preset appearances and the ability to create your own, any real world appearance can be created in Visualize. Thank you.